Uh, someone else is asking about low Earth orbit satellites. Leos. Um, to connect Leos. I'm uh, reading rural a question. areas. That's a good question. It's a great yeah. question. Are you investing in those? So it's interesting. We looked at the, there's there's two big providers out there. Everyone, of course, knows Elon Musk's company, Starlink. Um, you know, Starlink um, yesterday, just yesterday, put 40 satellites into space. Not four, 40. All right. He's put up 20,000 satellites very quietly in 24 months. And nobody talks about it. Elon Musk is blanketing the planet so that he can talk with your car. It's really interesting. I've become um, one of my mentors, a guy named Charlie Ergen, who runs a company called Dish uh, in Denver. He's a great CEO. I mean, big culture guy, big dare to dream big guy. And he says, you know, his, his favorite business partner is Elon Musk. And so every time Dish puts up a new satellite, guess who he uses? He uses SpaceX. And he said, this guy thinks in dimensions that the, the rest of the planet just doesn't think in. And he says, everything he touches works because he doesn't accept what's been taught to him. He doesn't accept what everyone's saying. So a simple problem, which was rocket propul propulsion. And for years, NASA said, look, the only way to get a spaceship down is got to put a parachute on it. You got to let it land in the ocean and you can't reuse rockets. Totally bad thinking. So he said, well, why don't I reverse the physics of how a rocket goes up into space? How do we use the reverse physics to figure out how we land a rocket so we can reuse it? NASA laughed at him. 14 years ago, they laughed at him and said, you can't do that. And we all know what SpaceX has done now. His rockets go up, he reuses the boosters, they land, 10 days, that bird goes right back up. Takes NASA 10 months solving a problem. And he said, what I love about Elon is he said, look, everyone's looking at Leo's and saying, okay, it's going to be, it's going to destroy home internet. It's going to destroy cellular communications. It's going to destroy, he's going to kill everybody. He said, everyone's missing the point. How many Teslas are on the planet today? Anyone know in the audience? Anyone want to chat in? Let's see if I can see in the chat. Room. Anyone know how many Teslas are on the planet? Do, 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 do. Let's see. Okay. Well, I will tell you that there are roughly about um, 7 million Teslas today on the planet. Um, Elon thinks that he can get to over 200 million Teslas in this decade. And he looks at the car the way Tim Cook looked at the Apple phone over, you know, at the iPhone 15 years ago. So he believes the car will be the dominant communications device by mm -hmm. which he gathers information on consumers. So he believes that his car, and by the way, his um, network intelligence that are in those cars, Cadillac's now using it in their new SUV. And um, uh, Volkswagen uses NVIDIA today, but they're talking about switching over to uh, Elon's platform. He believes that his intelligence and in vehicles will be the dominant um, computer processing capabilities in every car on the planet within 20 years. He wants to own every car. He's made it very clear. And if he has the car, he's got you. Because when you get in your car, you've got all your preferences. He knows where you're going to go shop. He knows where you're going to eat. He knows where you're going to work. He knows what you're listening to in the car. He, you know, he can predict a lot of behavior just by monitoring your car. So he views the car as the next iPhone. And Starlink is the methodology or the mechanism, the delivery mechanism by which he'll communicate with those subscribers. And he's going to get it for free. He's going to get a mm -hmm. mobile network for free. And that's a very powerful, powerful thing. But he's just thinking in different dimensions, which is what I love. I love it when somebody takes, you know, takes a new opportunity and, mm. and slices and dices. So there's a competitor called OneWeb. Um, it's now in its third owner in eight years. It's gone through two bankruptcies. Um, the folks that own it today are out of India. We looked at the most recent bankruptcy. We worked on it for about six months. And ultimately, again, just could not get comfortable with competing against the guy that thinks in multiple dimensions. It's not a guy you want to compete with. It's a guy you want to be a friend with. So Instead, we're, we're laying fiber for Starlink. We're building um, what are called earth stations uh, for Starlink. We're building wireless ground communications. Because remember, Musk still has, he still has to have ground communications that interfaces with the satellite that triangulates off the car. He has to get access to mobile networks. So there's a big systems integration piece, John, that happens with Leos. And uh, DigitalBridge, we're building a lot of that systems integration um, infrastructure to support Starlink on the ground and OneWeb. We're doing some work with OneWeb and um, Sirius XM satellite radio is a huge customer of ours. Dish is a massive customer of ours. So satellites are, are definitely somebody we work with and, and we'll continue to work with them.